Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play by me, the Gamer Wolf 6 of More Not To, the original Koyazoot. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can go down to the link in the description or you can download and get it for free. And since this has H content in it and this is YouTube, we're going to be skipping over any H content we come across. And on our last Let's Play, uh, we uh, met with Koya and he was like, Hey, why don't you come live at my place? Which is why this is a different room. So with all that out of the way, let's start. Tick, tick, tick. In my light sleeping, I heard a tiny noise. Maybe it was the second hand of a clock, and the intermittence made me open my eyes. Hmm? Open my eyes, and greeted by an unfamiliar room. My heart skipped a beat, but immediately afterwards my memory came back. My violently pumping heart quick, uh, quickly calmed down. Oh yeah, I'm staying over at Koya's place. Light leaking through the gap in the curtains illuminated the room. Based on the light, it must really be early, or must be really early. When I look around to where the sound was coming from, a small hand was pointing down. 6.32. Compared to my usual, I woke up really early, which is weird because I did that this morning. Like, I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before, so I went to sleep around 12-ish. And then I woke up at 8, which is like... I thought I was supposed to get more sleep if I'm tired. Anyways, I was wondering what I should do since I was awake, but if I get up, I'd most likely wake up Koya too. Since I'm not really that stealthy, I just stayed in the futon. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. Still, since I'm not doing anything else, it's not that fun. Basically trying to kill time. It's comfortable kind of just laying in bed, but I'm not feeling sleepy at all. And I woke up so late yesterday, too. No, instead of waking up, it's more like I never went to sleep. I was on the futon just after midnight, and then after that, I, I, thought, I thought deeply. Koya. Koya, who ran away from home. As I thought about it, it wasn't the question of what happened, but the topic kept spinning around my head. Is it okay for me to stay here? All of a sudden, I became uneasy. When you run away from home, your parents can't exactly provide assistance. How does he make a living from his part-time work? Even I could tell it was tough, without needing to think about it. It'd be great if I wasn't in the way. I was starting to hate how often I was thinking that lately. But if I go to say, I'm going back, Koi isn't going to stay. No, wait. <coughs> Koi isn't going to stay. Oh, okay then, and let me go. On the contrary, it most likely hurt him. I want you to stay at my place, but only if you're okay with that. Or do you not like that idea? He wouldn't usually far with that line. Also, if I thought that, I wouldn't be offering it in the first place. That's more something Koya would say. Yeah, I'm sure of it. My gaze moved to Koya, who was beside my bed. I guess he turned over in his sleep, since his fearless face was pointed this way. I could easily see him hold, uh, rolling on the spread-out futon on the floor. Koya wanted me to take the bed, but as a freeloader, I thought it was too presumptuous for me to take the bed. Koya looked comfortably asleep. The sound of his easy breathing reached me easily. I guess I'll stay another two days after all. I also want to be here if I could be anywhere. So, I'll be here. When I look at Koya's face, somehow I feel a bit more determined. Just now, everything I was worrying over made me feel like an idiot. I really am an idiot. I'm worrying about weird things again. Koya would say something like that. Thinking about that, I laughed a little. When Koya woke up and opened his eyes, why are you laughing at someone's sleeping face? Koya spoke in a sleepy voice. I faltered a bit. I, I'm not. Then what are you laughing about? Um, it's because you're talking in your sleep, going, Stop, 
Not there. Don't touch that. It's too tight. Liar. Just made that up right now. Koya spoke over his shoulder as he sat up. Then he stretched once. <clears throat> you seem sleepy, Koya. Obviously, it's the first thing in the morning. But you still woke up surprisingly early. It's not even seven yet. Did I wake you up? I got up from the futon and opened up the curtains. The light from that was originally peeking in flood, uh, now flooded the room. There's going to be good weather today. Well, no. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you something important. Huh? What? You'll have to stay here by yourself for a while, since I have to go to work. It's from 9 to 3. Uh, seriously? I'm really sorry. I'm getting a break tomorrow. But because of that, I can't hang out today. Mm, well, I guess that's that. Do you live alone after all? But you do live alone after all. Thanks for understanding. You can do as you like while I'm gone. I'll give you a spare key. If you want to go out, that's fine. Oh, no wait, a hoe? Are you saying it's okay for me to go through all your stuff and look for your dirty magazines? You could do that, but I don't know if you'll find anything. With his, unu with his usual poker face, he passed by me. It would have been funny if he'd gotten all flustered and said, Stop! <laughs> then I really will do it. But before you do that, let's have breakfast. I can't take it easy just yet. Koya got out of bed and went to the kitchen. Hey, did he just ignore what I said? Well, that's fine. So, what's for breakfast? With the change in topic, I asked Koya as he started preparations. I think I have an idea of what it is, though. Hmm? I'm kind of reluctant about it, since you're visiting, but same as last night? Of course. Saying that, Koya began heating the pot of curry. Is that a Japanese thing, eating curry in the morning? I mean, I love curry more than the next person, but I don't know. I haven't curry in the morning. It's a bit filling, but maybe they... Maybe it's like just a little bit of curry, you know, like a snack curry. Because usually when I have it, I have like several big scoops of rice and then just having that rice super saturated with curry and all the little bits of vegetables and meats and stuff. Alright, I'm off. Sorry, I just had... This music right here kind of made me think of... Final Fantasy 15, like, doesn't it sound like one of the songs from there? Like, you're going into a town, or you sit in a restaurant, and it's like, here's the menu of this high-res looking food that is too good looking. God, I need to go look at pictures of all the food stuffs. There's just so many in that game. Don't know why oysters were the... Or I think oysters were the most expensive thing. It's like half a million. Anyways, concentrate. Alright, I'm off. Okay, do your best at work. Right. I saw Koya off from the doorway, just like a newlywed would. Koya, my love, please come back. Koya slightly raised his hand in response to me, and afterwards, the only thing he, that was left was the sound of the door closing. And then I was alone. Okay, what should I do? Jerk off? <clears throat> I got the key from the house at breakfast, for the house at breakfast. I could go out if I wanted to, but there isn't any place I particularly want to go to. Hmm, I need to think about this. Frankly, there's nothing to do. Hmm. So I should go, should, so I should go looking for Koi's porn mags? No, no, that would be bad. Hmm, I'll do some cleaning then. And if something were to turn up, wouldn't that be an accident? I mean, yeah, but... Isn't that kind of sneezy? S sneaky. Besides, can I just waltz into his room? It's fine. He probably changed the hiding place. Since he was cleaning in a panic yesterday. I could at least put things in order. Out of vet virtue. But, well... I'll stop complaining. Right. 
I'll get to it. Out of virtue. Ah, uh, slipped it into the mental self-con- Conference. Before I realize it, please don't mind me. Anyhow, I'll start off with cleaning up. Hmm. Since I found myself in a position to help Koya, I came across a good idea while things about while thinking about other things. I'm not feeling guilty at all. Yep. All right, let's do this. I should be done by noon, so I'll set out right now. Okay. I wonder if anything will turn up. Nothing's here. Can't be. Not that I was looking. However, nothing really popped out. Until now, I've spent nearly three hours cleaning. The clock has nearly struck noon. Math. So 12, 11, 10, 9. We spent about two hours cooking and eating. Thanks to that, I can see the area where, uh, area there's shining. The po it's positively sparkling. Shit. Nothing. Nothing there. Impossible. I waved a clean fist, a uh, clenched fist. I insisted so. I mean, this is Koi's room, isn't it? He should have like an entire section of pornos. Why didn't I find anything turn up? Wait, why didn't anything turn up? It's completely weird. I... Mediocrity... The mediocrity is kind of irritating. Damn you, Koya! Just kind of... You could at least offer me one. At this moment, this morning's conversation crossed my mind. You could do that, but I don't know if you'll find anything. No way. I don't know if I found anything. I was confident that there would definitely be a hiding space, and I've probably been telling myself so. But could it be? There was nothing to begin with? In that case, what I've been doing for the past few hours. Well, cleaning. I'll go eat. I unintentionally sighed, then went towards the kitchen. But then, a familiar sound echoed through the room. Where? The suddenness of it made me, of it made me start. What did I do? Is that the porno alarm? A visitor coming. Was that out of line with my exp expectations? No, it was out of line. Is it okay for me to answer? No, but is it bad? Try and make it again while I was thinking. If it's quick, it, that would be troubling. Oh yeah, I'm house sitting at the moment. For now, it would be okay to go look. I'm coming. I came to my conclusion and went to the door. I slowly opened the door. Yes, who is it? When I saw who it was, I forgot whatever I was going to st what I was about to say. Staring blankly, there's no way I could mistake who it was. That appearance hasn't changed at all from the image in my memories. Now, still in Minnesota, she took care of me a lot. Dark? Kun? Miss? It was Koi's mother, Kazumi-san. Oh, it really is you. It's been so long. You've gotten so big. Meeting someone from so long ago, I'm just still so surprised. How long will you be here? For all of August. Right now, I'm on some vacation. I see. Since it's been so long since you've been here, you must have missed so many things. Yes, definitely. Hmm, I see. Kazumi-san uh, smiled and nodded at my words. But they only lasted a moment before her expression changed to something complex. By the way, has Koya gone out? Uh, uh yes. He's not here. He's at his job now. I'm housing for him since I'm not paying him anything while I'm here. Uh, he'll be he'll be here in a few hours or so. I see. Then, when he comes back, will you give this to him? After saying that, Kasumi sent down a broke a brown envelope to Koya 
was written neatly on it. Ah, yes, I understand. I'm sorry, Dark Coon. Uh, well then, I'll be counting on you. Kasumi san and trusted me the letter to me, then left. Completely flabbergasted. I stood stock still in front of the entryway. The envelope was still in my hand. Okay, beet and veggie fried rice is ready. Ah, uh, sounds so good. I love fried rice. When I was a kid, I was like, ew. Rice that isn't, you know, white that I usually see, that's weird. But then it's like, mmm, fried rice. I don't think I've ever had brown rice before. I mean, usually it's just white, and then it's like, fried and soya sauced. Anyways, focus. Hmm, no matter how many times I try it, you're really good at this. Just what do you expect from somebody? Just what you'd expect from somebody who lives alone? It's nothing to be praised about. Besides, you've only s seen me cook twice. The number of times doesn't matter, for sure. Really? Anyway, take this over there for me. Yes, sir. I didn't. Uh, wow. I diligently brought over the portions onto the table, just like Koya asked. Out of the corner of my eye. I noticed the clock hand uh, had only just passed six. It's a bit early, but we couldn't think of anything else, anything to do, so we decided to have dinner. Now then, let's eat before it gets cold. Hmm, time to eat. Yeah, let's eat. Still, to spend all day, day cleaning like that, you must have been really bored. Koi's eyes seemed to be saying, wouldn't it have been okay to just go somewhere? Well... There wasn't any place I especially wanted to go. So I thought clean up would be better. You went around searching for Porno, didn't you? Uh, no. Game of Six never looks for Porno. All of a sudden, Koei was prodding at me, and my heart lifted to my throat. Hey, this fried rice is awesomely delicious. So, did you find my prized collection? Inside the magazines? Lies! I couldn't find it anywhere. Then he did go looking. Yeah, that was a horrible trick. Then don't fall for something like this. Koya was looking at me, completely aghast. Begging you, stop looking at me with those eyes. My god. Ooh, I'm sorry. Whatever, just eat. Yeah, okay. Head for the change in subject, I quickly finished up the rest of my food. Phew, thanks for the food. Today's meal was also very delicious. I said it earlier, it's nothing to be praised about. No, it's not that. Uh, I can handle dealing with the dishes. I mean, let me handle them. You're being strangely helpful. You don't need to go so far out of your way. I know. But this problem is with. But this is a problem with my feelings. Uh huh. If you say so. I'll leave it to you again. I'll take care of it. After boasting, I stood up so I could uh, take the dish to the kitchen. It was then that uh, something fell out of my pocket. Ah. It was an envelope. Why would you keep an envelope in a pocket? Like when you're in the built like room. A thing that Kazumi-san uh, had me hold on to. After Kazumi-san gave it to me, I put it in my pocket and left it there. It's not that I forgot about it. I haven't been hi I wasn't hiding it. It just... It was hard to give it to him. There wasn't a reason for it. I didn't even understand it myself. It's his mail. I'm not sure if the thing... There's law in Japan, but I think there's law in the United States that that's a federal crime. I simply never gave it to him. Hmm? What's that? Eh? Ah, uh, sorry uh, for taking so long to give it to you. During the day, I was asked to deliver it. Here. I handed the envelope over. Koya looked at it curiously as he turned it around. Who's it from? There's no sender written on it. 
Miss Kazumi. This hasn't changed a bit since back then. Koi's face turned into something a bit inscrutable. It was a mechanical, cold expression. I thought so. His face seemed to say, seemed to say. Koi should have, who, who should have left home? Why should? And Kazumi-san, who came to visit. One way or another, Koi didn't seem too happy. It's possible that it's because it wasn't given to him earlier. Koya? He didn't seem to answer, then opened the envelope in silence. With a sudden movement, he opened the seal and checked inside. What fell out was a page of stationery. It was folded in three, which Koya opened and began reading quietly. It looked like it was written on all the way down to the bottom, but I couldn't read anything from where I stood. Cory kept going on in complete silence. Staying there felt somewhat awkward, so I took the dishes to the kitchen. The mood felt heavy, heavier than any leftovers on the plates. <coughs> the person that was kept swaying in for a while. I want to say something to Koya. However, I couldn't think of anything that seemed like it would do anything. It was like my heart had put it had put a clamp in, on my mouth. I carried on like that, feeling a bit pi pitiful. I got a little depressed. <sighs> Tiny sigh came out as I turned the faucet. It was then that I could hear the sound come from the table. I looked over my shoulder. My eyes met with Koya's as he stood up, fixing the edge of his shirt. I have to go shopping. The fridge look is looking a bit empty. Oh. Okay, I got it. I'll take care of things here. No. That's not what I wanted to say. I always chose the words that wouldn't burden him. That wouldn't become a bother to him. But it was useless. Right now, I can't do that. But, as I thought, the words wouldn't come out. Right. Without another word, he turned and left. The door closed with a thud. I was left alone in the room with the sound of running water. When I remembered about the faucet, I turned that off, and finally it was silent. What do I do? Again, another sigh. At this rate, maybe it'd be better to let him go? Nope. Is Kay to let Koya go? No. There's no way it should be. But what can I say? What can I say to him? I don't know. I just don't know. Still, I can't let things go on like this. For now, I have to go after him. I know. I can't leave Koya by himself. That's why I, th I thought about it to be Koya's strength. I've always thought that. A minute later, I was walking out the door. Went on roots, and went and picked up a letter he rolled into the garbage, rolled up into the garbage, and the wallet he left on his bed. There's no such person who would go shopping and forget their wallet. I saw Koya's wallet when I was leaving the room. Someone would go and shove and wouldn't leave that behind, as I said it the third time. Do something like that is completely unlike Koya. I noticed just at, as I was about to leave, something that shouldn't be overlooked. So why was it left behind? I wasn't planning to go shopping to begin with. So where did Koya go then? Around around the village looking for him. Not here. Not here either. Even after searching in the village, I couldn't find him. There's pretty much nowhere left I haven't looked. And steadily the sunlight was dimming. Koya, where did... I stopped to catch my breath and calm down a little. No good. I didn't find anything running around at random. I have to think about it. If I were Koya, where would I go? A popular place is out of the question. Koya would want to be alone. 
That he left in silence would be proof of that. So, there's no point... No way that can be it. If I think about it like that, he probably didn't go to anyone out, anyone's house. So, aside from all that, what kind of place w would he go to? So, I did this before, you know, I was just seeing what today would be like. And, like, originally I clicked this and he was there, and it's like, what happens if I click the other things? I click them and then I run into somebody else that's like, you know, Koya, he's probably at the riverside. So, riverside, yeah. Which is the right place. As I thought it over, I skimmed over all my memories. In that white, white space, I could see the form of one husky boy sitting down with his legs spread out in front of him. He was looking off into the distance, not noticing me behind him. I slowly approached his back, then clapped him on the shoulder. He turned around. The riverside? After coming back from a soundless, odorless, senseless vision, for some reason, it felt instinctual. I don't have any supporting evidence, but before I think about it further, I put my faith into that idea. It was darker than the city, but I ran through the evening. As I approached the stream, I had a, a thought that seemed to be uh, tell me something. I'm over here. I began running as though I that had actually been called. At the same time, I remembered more bit by bit. When stuff happens, I usually come out here. That's what the boy said. He said that when he looks at the flowing water, it's somehow calming. On hot summer days, when he wanted to get nice and cool, it was always his favorite place from back then. I weaved my way through the pa uh, paddy fields, and before long, the riverbank spread out in front of my eyes. In the light of the night sky, reflected off the river. I saw him sitting down, legs spread out in front of him. Koya was alone here. He wasn't doing anything aside from sitting here. It's as if time had stopped. But the sound of instincts, insects and the murmuring of the river told me it wasn't the case. Slowly approached. Standing here behind him, Koya's back somehow looked smaller than usual. Koya? From behind him, I spoke. At the sound of his name, Koya looked over his shoulder. Dark? What is it? How's the apartment? Koya replied back, looking the same as he ever did. As I answered, I sat down beside him. I just used the duplicate key, since I had it. Someone went out shopping and forgot their wallet. Koya said nothing. Most likely, he knows what I was thinking in coming over here. And so, that thought was likely correct. If that's the case, there are things I need to say to him. Even if it's meddlesome, it's all okay. I've got things I want to say, and things I've thought about. And also, I've decided. I decided this, mor yeah, this morning when I, got, when I was at Koya's. I decided I would tell him my feelings. Therefore, with determination in my chest, I opened my mouth. Hey, Koya? What? Is this is just simple noiseness? Uh, nosiness? You might hate it, but would you still listen? Koya shut his mouth again, so I kept on. I don't know what happened to you before. But I do know that right now, you're worrying, and that you're suffering. Koya, don't worry about thing. Don't worry about things by yourself. You aren't alone. You've got everyone right by your side. Konosuke, Shinkun, Shinkun, Koyoji, Tatsuni, Tsuchi-san, Sotaro-kun, Torahiko, and also right now, I'm here. I'm not that reliable, but I'm sure I can at least be a bit of strength for you. So, rely on me more. Don't hold back. Friends, aren't we? I wasn't lying. Those are my true feelings. I want him to rely on me more. It's alright for him to count on me more. It's 
a, a little thing, but I thought I want to be Koi's strength. Like I was reaching out to him. Koi stayed silent, just taking in my words. He seemed to be thinking about something. And now, I said nothing myself, and silence ran between the two of us. The only sound of water kept going. Before long, it was Koya who broke the silence. I'm an idiot. I was trying not to worry you, and I ended up doing the exact opposite. I really am a big idiot. Koya. Sorry, Dark. Looks like I made you worry too much. It's just like you said. If you came, if you came all the way out here, it wouldn't, wouldn't it have been better if I talked to you from the start? After saying that, Koya laughed sadly. I left home about the time I entered high school. I had a fight with my father. And then, little by little, he started talking. Things I didn't know about that happened in Minnesota when I wasn't around. I started playing the guitar during the last few years of grade school. And since no one talks about it, I doubt she knew about that. I've always loved music since back then. I was interested in that. I thought I'd try it sometime. Around then, I was still it was still just a hobby, so I thought I, it would be fine to just enjoy it. But then I started thinking, if I had the chance, I would want to be a musician. That was around summer of the first year of middle school. The motive wasn't anything special. It was around then that I became acquainted with a street musician. You see them now and again, Kazanari, but after seeing him so many times, I started stopping and listening to his song. Nobody else stopped, and I wonder why I was so captivated by that song. And then, one day, something happened. I was going there to listen to the song like always, when he called out to me. Hey, you there. Me? Yeah, you. We've been seeing your face around a lot lately. I can remember you since you're the only one to stop and listen. I guess you like my song then. No, to be honest, I don't really understand. Every time, I feel it just stop for some reason. To listen to your song, maybe? It's a strange way of putting it, but it feels like it was calling me over. Hmm, I see. Like you're called, eh? Oh, sorry for laughing. It's just that. Uh, that's the first time anyone said that. You're an interesting kid. Is that a compliment? Of course. How about it? If you're okay with it, why don't you come over and talk to me again sometime when you have time? I still don't know many people in this town. What do you think? I didn't have any special reason to say no, so I accepted his invitation. And so, just as before, I'd sometimes go over and listen, and just talk for a little bit. Koya laughs shyly. I stayed quiet and waited for Koya to keep going. I'll listen to it all, I thought. But we talked about a lot of things, without getting tired of it. And then, sometimes afterwards, I started thinking about one thing. It'd be great if I could get a lot of people to listen to my song, just like this guy. That's what I thought. It's because of that that I started aim, aiming to be a musician. There's a chance that I've had that uh, thought since I started playing on the guitar. But I'm sure the kickstart was because of him. If I think it's kind of a... I think of it... I think it's kind of a yearning. Living like that is probably fun, I figured. If I could live... Uh, w with the one I love. It'd always be fun. That's when I started taking the guitar seriously. I practiced hard, and occasionally, I played alongside next to that person. It quickly became a lot of fun, and I met a lot of friends and acquaintances. So, in the third year of middle school, I told my parents that when it was time to decide a career, that I wanted to be to walk the way of the musician but my dad. No, I will never allow that. I said nothing when you once play the guitar, 
but becoming a musician is ridiculous. Wait. I've been thinking about it a lot, and... <clears throat> you understand nothing. Listen, you're free to have your own dreams. But you can't live on dreams alone. Boys like you aiming to be a musician are a dime a dozen. Take a closer look at reality. If you're going to keep saying that, you won't be able to stay while keeping up with the guitar. The hell? Are you saying for my sake to not listen to other people? Stop screwing with me. I have my own ideas. And then? Then we had an even bigger argument. Looking back on it, it was a stupid fight. It would have been even better if I spoke more clearly. But I don't regret anything. I don't hate the way I am now, after all. If I never left home, I'm sure it'd have turned out this. I'm sure it'd never turn out this way. As Koi said that, I could see a bit of loneliness in his face. I, I was also feeling a bit lonely myself. Koya, you know that letter? It said to come visit tomorrow. I want to talk with you. It will be a secret from your father, and all that. What do you do? Right now, I still haven't decided. Koi said only that much, and hung his head. Whatever I do, it's probably going to be awkward. That's why I'm still thinking it over. Koi raised his head, and looked up at the night sky. Just, what's the best thing to do? Hey, what would you do, Dark? Hmm. For me... For me, what would I do? If I were Koya... Go see her. If you were me, I'd go. After thinking about it, that would be my answer. Just as he said, it might turn out to not be a good, that good a talk. But on the other hand, it's impossible... The opposite is true. The poss it's possible the opposite is true. <sighs> it's hard. No one really knows what will happen. It's true after all. The future still isn't decided yet. For the choices that weren't picked, you could you can't go back and choose them. But as you live, I think it's something that can't be helped. So if I were the one doing it, I wouldn't want to have regrets. I'd go, if it were me. Dark. Yeah, you're right. Sequoia murmured. I felt I could see the light shining in his eyes. Unless I'm delusional, I'm sure it was his determination. Thanks, Dark. Because of you, I remembered something important. Hmm? One of my favorite mottos. Where there's a will, there's a way. So, Koya laughed. It felt like I, have, I haven't seen that smile in forever. It's only been a few hours, too. It's a feeling I've missed. I'll go meet her, just like you said. Whatever happens, I won't know until I try. If I don't try, nothing will happen. Koya stood up. That figure somehow looked bigger than usual. All right, shall we head back? Even the summer, if we stay out at nights like this, we might catch a cold. Yeah, that's true. After hunting him back, Alice began to stand up. Seeing this, Koya extended a hand from me, from above. Here, Dark. Thanks, Koya. I took his hand and pulled myself up next to him. If someone saw this from the end of the street, it looked like a handshake. Hey, Dark? Koya began to talk while we stayed that way. Hmm? Thanks. A lot. After saying that, Koya turned his embarrassed face away and walked along, still holding my hand. What? It... a second? I thought of saying it, but I stopped. When I saw it, Koya's tail wagging like that, somehow I lost the will to speak. And occasionally, this sort of thing 
It isn't too bad. Dark. What? Thanks for coming out to meet me. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's going to be the end of this Let's Play. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please comment, because I like comments, so much you like, dislike, tips, or otherwise. If you like my YouTube and like to see it grow, then please uh, like, subscribe, and check out other videos to help it grow. And please remember to spay and or neuter animals to help control the pet population. Also, if you're interested in playing this game, then uh, link's in the description where you can get it for free. And, yeah. Thank you for watching, and until next time on Let's Play, by me, the Game of Six of More Not To You, the original Quasar. See ya.